This episode of My Life in Gaming is once again sponsored by Factor. Earlier this year, my wife transitioned back to in-office work while I continued to work remotely from home. For the last couple of years, we'd usually make something for lunch together or enjoy leftovers from the previous night's dinner. Now, <laughs> this is all changed. And Try convinced me that this was a perfect opportunity to try out Factor for myself. He's been a longtime customer, and now that I'm on my own for lunch on most days, having one of Factor's fresh, chef-prepared, ready-to-eat meals is a great option when I've got a lot to do. Head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use the code MLIG50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next box. That's code MLIG50 at Factor75.com to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Heck, these meals only take a couple of minutes to whip up, so I'm back to knocking off items on my to-do list without really missing a step. That sounds pretty darn good to me. So point your internet browser to Factor75.com or click the link below and use the code MLIG50 to get 50% off your first box and 20% off the next one. I care way too much about my save files. To some people, the digital history of sorts that a save file represents is meant to be erased so that one can start anew like it was the first time. But for me, ever since losing my original Fantasy Star save file from when I was a kid and later my Secret of Mana saves due to dead batteries, Preserving these save files has been something that's really important to me. Like, seriously, I am weirdly obsessed with preserving my save files. I've made a couple of videos on the subject over the years where I've showcased different methods and devices to aid others who might be as interested in this sort of stuff as I am. Perhaps my favorite development on this front are the trio of Memcard Pros from 8-Bit Mods. These micro SD equipped memory cards for the PlayStation, GameCube, and most recently PlayStation 2 are, pro are probably my favorite accessory for classic consoles, and they just keep getting better. With firmware version 1.0 having just released for the Memcard Pro 2, I thought that this seemed like the perfect excuse to do a more focused video on these cards. I'm constantly learning new things about them, and hey, Maybe you will too. It's hard to imagine that there was a time when memory cards were considered to be a step down from built-in save capabilities of cartridge games and CD-ROM add-ons like the Sega CD. In hindsight, I think we can probably agree that it was the right move. And I find myself appreciating them even more as time goes on, especially when the tech has given rise to devices like the Memcard Pro. The original Memcard Pro for the PlayStation was announced and shipped in 2020, a banner year for the console, as it was accompanied by both the PS1 Digital HDMI mod and the X-Station optical disc emulator. The three together helped the console evolve into what I feel is its ultimate form. Just the very idea that it had the potential to hold an essentially limitless supply of 128 kilobyte virtual memory cards on a micro SD was enough to sell me. But a tiny built-in OLED screen and features like Wi-Fi connectivity, auto generation of virtual memory cards or VMCs on a per game basis when used in conjunction with an ODE, and of course, full compatibility with PlayStation 1 games when played on a PlayStation 2 really showed that 8-bit mods had delivered the be-all, end-all solution for memory cards on the PlayStation 1. Naturally, everyone was hoping that a Memcard Pro 2 wasn't far behind. While I don't doubt that development on it started immediately following the release of the original Memcard Pro, Delivering something so fully featured on the PlayStation 2 hardware was an order of magnitude more complex. In the interim, 8-Bit Mods brought us the Memcard Pro GC for the Nintendo GameCube in 2022, which had feature parity with its older sibling, as well as additional GC-specific accoutrements, like block size allotments and Wii hardware compatibility. 
Around this time, the original Memcard Pro's hardware had been so thoroughly refined that 8-bit mods figured out a cost-effective way to deliver the same functionality without needing an FPGA. Good. The savings were passed on to the customer in the form of a significant price drop. Still, everyone was holding their breath with anticipation for the announcement of a Memcard Pro 2. And it finally made its debut in the summer of 2023, going up for pre-sale with an anticipated ship date of winter 2023. The Memcard Pro 2 made its way into people's hands right on schedule, and not only supports PlayStation 2 saves, but also supports PlayStation 1 games played on a PlayStation 2. Furthermore, unlike real PS2 memory cards, the Memcard Pro 2 will even fit in a PS1 console and works perfectly on that, too. While the initial firmwares still had some ways to go to deliver on the proposed functionality, the Memcard Pro 2 has been fully decorated with the promised trimmings as it barreled towards a 1.0 firmware. Beyond that, thanks to some exciting discoveries about the PlayStation 2 hardware, I wouldn't be surprised if the device's abilities have already exceeded the developer's wildest ambitions. Excellent! Although you might just care about saving your games and that's it, which is totally fine, it's worth pointing out that all three Memcard Pros are much more feature-rich than you might expect at a glance. So let's start with the basics. Well, as I've mentioned, thanks to the relatively small storage space that classic console memory cards of yesteryear used, you can store what amounts to thousands of virtual memory cards or VMCs on even the smallest micro SD card that you can easily buy today. Generating a virtual memory card on a Memcard Pro will contain eight channels under that title. Each channel is the equivalent to a blank memory card and are sorted into folders on the SD card where they're listed as memory card name dash one, dash two, and so on. The mini OLED screen will show you what card is mounted and which channel is active. You can use the physical buttons on the Memcard Pro itself to cycle through the channels, but you'll need to use the web interface to mount an entirely different memory card. So about that web interface, each Memcard Pro is equipped with Wi-Fi connectivity. And after following the steps to get it on your home wireless internet, you can access various options from a web browser. Just point your browser at the IP address shown on the OLED screen. You'll be able to change the channel of the currently mounted card, browse and mount different VMCs using the card browser, and change settings like OLED screen brightness, update the firmware, choose your startup VMC, and on the GC and PS2, you'll be able to select the default size that a new card is generated at when you create it. The GC allows for 59 blocks all the way up to 1019 blocks, although I recommend choosing 251 blocks and just sticking with it as standard. I've heard that some games have challenges with 1019 block cards, including original Nintendo made cards. With the Pro 2, you can choose from the basic 8 megabyte standard all the way up to 128 megs. The larger size requires a fast SD card, and I haven't dared test beyond 32 megs. I really only had four memory cards that were at or near capacity. Now, you can download the virtual memory cards to your desktop via the card browser, while activating FTP mode lets you upload and download virtual memory cards directly to the SD card. Most recently, the Memcard Pro received the ability to back up your VMCs to cloud storage for safekeeping. Right now, only Google Drive is supported, but hopefully Dropbox and the rest will be added. This feature is planned to be backported to older Memcard Pros. The main downfall of the current web UI is that when it comes to your standard memory card files, there's no way to tell exactly what saves are present on the card and the channel you have activated. You might have to mount the card and then open the browser on the console to see what you have. But check it out. The web UI isn't closed source, which means other developers can take a stab at making something more fully featured, like this enhanced UI that's currently in the works from Rob Louie. Man, this looks incredible. But honestly, this situation is pretty much moot if you're using per game memory card files. Okay, so per game memory cards, what's that all about? I mean, it sounds like a good thing, right? Heck yeah, it is, especially if you're using optical disc emulator like the X-Station in a PS1 or a GC loader on the GameCube. 
While on the PlayStation 2, you'll need one of the current forks of OpenPS2 Loader, or OPL for short, that supports Game ID. Okay, I'll explain. Outside of an endless supply of blank memory cards, per game saves are probably the most welcome feature of the MemCard Pro. You see, each PlayStation, PlayStation 2, and GameCube title has been given a unique alphanumeric code by the platform holders that has been given a overarching name of Game ID. You've probably noticed this number either on the spine of a case or inscribed on a disc, but this information is also contained in code on the disc. Unfortunately, there's no way for the MemCard Pro to access this information directly, at least with the PlayStation 1 and GameCube. Some recent discoveries with the PlayStation 2 hardware has changed the game big time, but I'll get to that in a minute. Thanks to a combination of various ODEs like the XStation and homebrew software like Swiss for the GameCube or specific forks of OPL for the PlayStation 2, Game ID information can be passed to the MemCard Pros directly. So long as you have the Enable Game ID feature toggled on in the menu, the mem cards will be able to do its thing and generate a specific memory card complete with eight channels based on that game's Game ID. Once it's all set up, I think you'll find that it's totally seamless. But hang on a second. To run OPL, you'll need to run Free McBoot, a bit of homebrew software that can be installed on a memory card, which allows you to run additional homebrew applications. Previously, you'd have to find a way to install Free McBoot on a real 8 meg memory card, which isn't always the easiest thing to figure out. However, the very existence of the MemCard Pro 2 expedites the process immensely, because now you can just download a memory card image file and put it on your MemCard Pro 2's SD card. Now use the web UI to set the Free McBoot memory card to boot up when you start up the system, and you're in. Now, I specifically mentioned the Game ID enabled forks of OPL earlier because you might have to seek it out. Right now, the best way to get it is from 8 bit mods directly via their App Center site. Hopefully, this process will be refined to be easier to locate later on. There's currently four different versions of Game ID OPL in play right now, a version that is pretty much the same as the main fork of OPL with Game ID a version of Grim Doomer's OPL with Game ID that has XFAT drive formatting support, and versions of each that work with PixelFX's RetroGem HDMI mod. All right, so uh, is that it? Are you screwed and not able to use per game memory cards if you just wanna use your own discs? Of course not. Maybe I overestimate who might want to use per game memory cards with the discs they own, then I'm sure you've at least fleetingly wondered if this was even possible. And they're all relatively easy to make use of, with the PlayStation 2 being by far the easiest. And by easy, I mean you literally don't have to do anything. In the last few months, enthusiasts in the PS2 scene discovered a history file that the PS2 writes to keep track of what games and game IDs it is loaded. This information was then shared with the devs at 8-Bit Mods, who were able to make it work with the MemCard Pro 2. So per game saves are simply just possible without any sort of prerequisite on the PS2, which is pretty incredible to me. And furthermore, check it out. This even works with PS1 games played on a PlayStation 2. That's crazy. Unfortunately, the process with Swiss for the Nintendo GameCube is a bit more convoluted because there is no pure memory card based exploit for the GC hardware. You'll need a boot disk to run Swiss from something like the SD Media Launcher or the SP to SD board. Once in there, you should be able to do a disk swap and boot the game from the menu, activating the correct per game memory card file. Finally, we have the PlayStation 1. Now, I hadn't been following that scene too closely at all, but when my PS1 equipped with a mod chip recently died, I checked to see if there might be any newer options out there. I was familiar with the Tony Hacks save file hack, but that seemed like a few too many hoops to jump through to get it to work. Little did I know that that had given way to a memory card based exploit called Free PSX Boot, which came out like three years ago and I had no idea. So this is pretty awesome. Much like Free McBoot, Free PSX Boot can install on a memory card, and if you enter into the memory card manager in the PS1's front end with that memory card inserted, 
It'll run new code that lets you boot whatever disk is in the drive, irregardless of media or region. It also just so happens that it will send the game ID of whatever game you boot through your Memcard Pro is. So check out the developer, Brad Lynn's GitHub for directions on how to install free PSX boot. You can either install it on an official memory card through a number of different methods. I personally use my PS3 memory card adapter connected to my PC. Or if you want to speed things up, you can follow pretty much the exact same method as running free McBoot off the Memcard Pro's SD card. Just make sure you download the right version for the system you want to use it on. And with that, you're up and running with the game-specific memory card files no matter if you decide to use an ODE, a hard drive, or the original disks. But now, what about your already existing save files that are compiled onto the loads of memory cards you undoubtedly have laying around? So the tricky part is getting those individual save files split out into their own memory cards so they can be loaded up seamlessly when a game boots up. Don't worry, it's not too bad, I promise you. It used to be a lot worse. I guess the main hurdle to consider when separating these saves is that you just need to get them onto the respective memcard pros in the first place. Truthfully, the easiest way to do this is just by using the console's built-in memory card managers. Mount a blank card on your memcard pro in slot 1 and put one of your existing cards in slot 2 and just copy them over one by one. When the first memcard pro released, I remember spending longer than I'd like to admit going through each of my memory card files and using the fantastic memcard rex program to copy individual save files to standalone .mcd files. Then I had to rename them all to the correct name using the PlayStation Data Center site to find the correct game ID. GameCube was a similar process, but at least I was able to split out and dump the save files to the SD card using the GC Memory Card Manager Homebrew Channel app ahead of time. But alas, I was not looking forward to doing it again with the PlayStation 2. Just one of those days, I guess. Thankfully, the entire process is much easier, thanks to a couple of developers who have created utilities and scripts that will split out each file and put it into a folder with the correct game ID. Bodget's utility will work with both PlayStation 1 and GameCube memory card files, while Kester's script will work with PlayStation 2 saves. You can now copy all these split out save files in their respective folders back to the SD card. Browsing the SD card via the web UI will show you the game name along with its game ID, but if you pop it into a computer, it'll be hard to know what you're even looking at. Previously, if you were looking to, say, send a memory card file of a specific game to someone, you'd have to reference the game ID on a website like the PlayStation Data Center or Games TDB. A relatively simple Python script by developer Nima Moshiri will copy the memory card files to your computer and add the game's name to the folder. Restoring it back to the SD card will remove that text from the name so it's readable by the Memcard Pro. This might seem minor, but it's super helpful for people who want to be more hands-on with their save backups. So these Memcard Pros, pretty cool, right? The team at 8 Mods have done an exceptional amount of work to make sure that these devices are as user-friendly as possible. Uh, I'm almost positive that there's got to be a Dreamcast VMU Memcard Pro in the works at this point. Even though that angle is currently being covered by the VM2, I'm still really interested in what sort of spin 8-bit mods will bring to the table for that system. So you can count me in for it.